Hey there! If you go to a website and inspect its page source, you will notice this doctype declaration before the HTML element. But what exactly is doctype? Why is it useful? And what's the history behind it? Let's find out. Doctype stands for Document Type Declaration and it is the first line of code required in every HTML or XHTML document. This is important because different versions of HTML or XHTML have different rules and syntaxes. Doctype is not an HTML element, like body or div, but an instruction for the browser on how to render the code on a web page. The good news is that you should only be using Doctype HTML, nothing else, not even XHTML Doctype. Any other doc type other than doc type HTML is considered harmful and it is very frowned upon nowadays. But do you know what else is considered harmful? The absence of a doc type on a web page. Having no doc type will trigger the browser to render the so called Kirk's mode. To explain what Kirk's mode is, we have to go back in time when the Jurassic period of the World Wide Web was dominated by two major browsers, Netscape Navigator and Microsoft Internet Explorer. Back then, there were no web standards and the developers had to code two versions of the same web page. One version for Netscape Navigator and one for Microsoft Internet Explorer. Just imagine the joy. Finally, when the web standards started to sprout and made their way out of the Jurassic period, the browsers could not just start using them as doing so would break most existing sites on the web. So they started to treat new sites differently from the legacy ones. On the left side, you can see a web page that has been rendered with doc type, and on the right side, there's a page without doc type, meaning it has been rendered in quirks mode. Let's go ahead and see some of the differences between the two. In Kirk's mode, there are margins surrounding the page, while on the other web page, we don't have any margins. One more thing which you most likely already noticed is that on the page with Kirk's mode enabled, the paragraph is red, while on the other page it is not. That's because the name of the class is case sensitive. There are plenty of other similar quirks, but I showcased only these two just to give you a glimpse of the impact of not having doc type declared on a page. If you can't figure out at first if the page is rendered in quirks mode or not, run the following line in the browser's console document.compat mode. If the value is back compat, the web page is in quirks mode. If the value is CSS1 compat, then the page is not in quirks mode. Alright, now we have a little bit more of an understanding of how Doctap came to be. Let's now find out how an older version of Doctap looks like. This is the World Wide Web Consortium's website. Based on the doc type, it is using HTML4, but there is one more thing here. It says transitional. Let's go to another page of W3C and we can see that this one is using XHTML1 with strict. Hmm, pretty interesting. Let's find out more about those. Here we have a list of recommended doc type declarations. We can notice that there are three types of declarations for HTML4 and XHTML1. We have strict, transitional, and frame set. This is really old stuff, but in just a few words, strict, transitional, and frame set are flavor of how the browser should interpret the HTML code of the web page. Strict tells the browser it should not use some of these deprecated features.
Transitional tells the browser that it can use the deprecated elements mentioned earlier and also support for CSS1. And last but not least, FrameSet is a variant of HTML4 Transitional that uses FrameSet element instead of the well-known body element. Alright guys, that was it for this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of what is doc type and the chaotic history behind it. Stay tuned for more content, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.